Good evening. Hello and welcome. This is Politics on Sunday. And we're live from our studio in the nation's capital. I am Femi Akonde. Well, let's begin the show by telling you that amidst rising food prices and weakening purchasing power, there are efforts by Nigeria's economic managers to slow down the downturn. But it seems some citizens are taking laws into their hands in their efforts to get food. There is now a spike in incidents of looting and attack on facilities or vehicles suspected to contain food items. Earlier today in Abuja, a warehouse that belongs to the FCT uh, Agri Department was looted by some residents. They carted away all that was stored for distribution to the poor and vulnerable in the capital city. The same news. And because we needed to be sure what we were doing, we had to drive to our own warehouse. And when we got there, it was confirmed that our own warehouse is intact. But to ensure that we convince Nigeria that the warehouse is not of NEMA, we had to drive down this way to be sure this is what happened. And we were made to, we were well informed that this warehouse belonged to FCT Agri Department where grains were stored. It's rather an unfortunate incident. Well, with all of this happening, President Bola Tinubu in July last year declared a state of emergency on food security because of the rising cost of food and how it affects citizens. President Bola Tinubu also directed that all matters pertaining to food and water availability and affordability as essential livelihood items be included within the purview of the National Security Council. Just last month, President Bola Tinubu met with state governors where it was agreed that Nigeria has the capacity to feed itself and would not need to import basic food items. A directive, of, a directive was also given to clamp down on groups and individuals hoarding food items to create artificial scarcity and push up prices. But it appears some people are impatient with the policies, plans and programs of government. They just want food on their table, regardless of the ways and means they get it. Just this weekend in Dogarawa, Zaria local government uh, area of Kaduna State, a truck uh, carrying pasta was attacked and looted by a group of youth. Is this caused by hunger or is it sheer criminality? One thing is clear, this is a setback for food security, especially if this food crisis continues. Security agencies need to do more to prevent this gale of looting. Well, on the program today, I will be discussing the state of the nation and also give perspective to issues of national interest. My guest is Senator Mohammed Sani Musa, representing Ninja East Senatorial District in the National Assembly. He's also the chairman of the Senate Committee on Finance. Thank you for joining us on the program. Welcome. Thank you, Femi. Well, I'd like you to first um, react to these um, incidents of um, looting of warehouses, what we saw that happened in the FCT uh, today. Uh, the question is, is this sheer criminality or is it caused by hunger? Uh, thank you, Femi. When there's an issue about food and hunger, you should expect so many things to be happening. It might not be criminality, but it can be criminality where uh, hoodlums will take advantage of situations and try to uh, do unwholesome acts which uh, eventually we can translate that as a criminal act. Mm. But by large, the issue of food security is something that uh, every one of us must take very seriously. And I believe with what Mr. President is doing and uh, what the subnational governments, some of the subnational governments are doing, I think uh, there is need for us to translate all into real actions at this time. There is no more time to live. Mm. We must do the needful in order to be able to take care of this situation. Uh, we are in a country where we can feed ourselves. That we can. Okay, let me, let me quickly jump in on that. Talking about feeding ourselves, you also recall that uh, the federal government says 
there is no need to import food because we have the capacity to capacity to feed ourselves. You are also from Niger, you are from Niger State, uh, a state where um, most of the population are, are farmers. And we also, we have also seen protests in Niger State, hunger protests in Niger State, where the governor made uh, some pronouncements and we have be we are beginning to see the effect of that uh, pronouncement. But talking about the sub-nationals now, what are some of these um, policies you say uh, should be put in place to ensure that, yes, they meet the basic needs of their people and end hunger? Uh, the, one of the most cardinal responsibilities of any government is to make sure that they provide security. Mm. They also provide enabling environment for people to be able to meet their daily needs and ends. Mm. And uh, one of the things that this government is doing, I think, is not far from that. All we need to do, as I said earlier, is for us to double our actions to translate them. Uh, in Niger State, especially in my senatorial zone district, where recently some youths and women protested about food, I can recall that um, what really happened was that um, uh, some hoodlums that want to take advantage of the situation met some women who have gone to fetch water and they said look what are you people doing here when trucks of rice is coming in which uh, mr president have given niger state and some politicians and individuals are trying to take it to abuja mm -hmm. so let's block the way and get our food mm -hmm. so but when the news got around before all the youths can will gather the truck drivers decided to divert, take another route, and they were able to go with their footsteps. Mm. It is not actually what we are hearing on the social media that there was a planned protest. It wasn't, protest. A, it wasn't a hunger protest. But by and large, most importantly is, are we ready to take care of ourselves in terms of agriculture? to feed ourselves, yes. This country have the capacity to be able to produce for itself. And what do we need to do? Especially in Niger State, I can take you there. We have over 74,000 square kilometers of uh, uh, arable land. With what the governor has initiated doing now, with clearing of about 30 to 40,000 hectares of land in the 25 local government areas, which if you calculate will give you close to about 850 to 1 million hectares of land cleared. Imagine if we produce that. And we do it between the dry and the wet season. We will be able to not only feed Niger State, but feed Nigeria. But, and eventually, yeah. Nigeria can have the capacity to be able to feed the whole of West Africa. Now, the problem is not about... Um, uh, feeding or the problem now what is happening now is that a lot of farmers cannot go to their farms because of um, insecurity in rural areas and that is significantly or that has significantly um, reduced production and productivity in all of these areas I'm, I'm coming to that i'm coming to that the issue of security is one of the major factors that have affected farming especially in northern nigeria today and I will tell you what the former governor of Niger State, Right Honorable Muhammad Umar Bagwa, has done. Did you hear the governor talking about security today, about how he's going to deal with the banditry and everything? He has been very quiet, but walking silently. And which I believe, with the cooperation that we are giving him, and with the cooperation we are getting from the defense headquarters and the military hierarchy, you will see that banditry have drastically reduced from what it used to be to almost about 10, 15% down mm -hmm. in Niger State. When it used to be 100% why there is attacks everywhere, today you don't hear those attacks. When you hear attacks today in Niger State, it is when there have been, 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 been uh, 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 when they, they have been raided in either Zampara or Kaduna State, then they rush back. I mean, you know, in order to take cover, they come to Niger State. Mm. But when they come to Niger State, they don't stay, they still go back because we have a systematic way 
that we collaborated with the military to deal with the situation. Mm. And today, a lot of our people are going back to the farm. Yeah. And uh, what we are doing, the strategy we are putting in order to tackle the hunger situation, you can see, is translating. Mm. Because one of the factors we have seen is that people come to move, move our food items in trailers and export them out of the country. From Babana, we have a border town there. With the restriction that the governor has put in, a lot of food items that are being smuggled out of the country is no longer taking place. You know, people were worried with this um, restriction or this pronouncement made by the governor. Does it, some people um, interpreted it to mean that food items from Niger State can no longer be transported to other parts of the country? No, 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 that is not true. That is not what he meant. We know the people coming to buy for the sake of smuggling these food items out of the country. We need our people here to get this food. The more the food is here, the more the, I mean, the price will come down. But when they are taking all these food items out of the country, they know that they are making double of what they, are. they, they, they bought those food items. So they will keep doing it. So with the restriction he has put in, I think uh, by now you will see that food items in Niger State are coming Yes, down. our correspondent in Niger State, Chenemi Bame, he actually reported uh, a drop in food prices yes. uh, at the markets in um, Niger State. But uh, distinguished uh, senator, a lot of Nigerians are still worried because the situation in Niger State is um, different. In some other states, food prices are still high. The Senate met with um, the economic uh, managers of the country, the CBN governor, the minister of finance and all of that. But at the end of the day, it appears the Senate gave them a pat on the back, saying that you are satisfied with the way they are handling the economy. But that is not the situation with Nigerians. The, pr the food prices are still high. The hunger is still there. The hardship is still there. So why is um, the Senate's uh, position different? You see, uh, let me be honest with you, uh, Femi. Addressing the prevailing economic situation in this country requires so many things. And those things that we require in order to put both the short-term and the long-term strategy in overcoming these situations, Mr. President, His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has initiated them. You see, we, 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 we found ourselves in a situation where there has been serious lapses on the part of our economic managers in the last 16 to 24 years. Oh. A nation like Nigeria, whereby everything is evolving, we're a nation of over 200 million people. We need to plan, a long time planning. Our rolling plans have not been working. And today, what Mr. President comes in with, the strategies he's putting for us, which the economic team have been able to explain to us as, a, as, a, as legislators, we have seen how typically it involves both the physical and the monetary policies, which are either long term or short term. If you look at it from the physical policies, Mr. President have done too much in initiating ways that Nigeria will overcome its economic problems. He has tried so many strategies which he has put in place to stimulate and allow the economy to grow. Are those strategies working? The strategies are not strategies that you can just put like a table and you tap a, a button and it starts working. No. But Nigerians are growing no, in patience. No, we have to persevere. For how, Nigerians for how have to persevere. You see, he has tried to initiate certain things like tax cuts, which will give the productive industry, I mean productive sector, some kind of incentives to be able to produce more and put in the market. You can see the, the, the epilepsy we are facing today with power. He has initiated so many things to see how we can tackle. These are not things. The decay is not yesterday. The decay has been for a long time. So you cannot expect that overnight we'll be able to change those things. 
but the strategy we are putting down both the spendings in infrastructure today i believe that within a short time we will see the needed changes look at the monetary policies as well yeah. he has done quite a well just the the central bank MPC yeah. came up with a policy. Yeah, listen, before, before we yeah. go um, into that, I would like to go on a short break and then when we return, we'll continue our conversation. We'll talk about the monetary policy and all that um, the government is um, doing. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break and we'll be back to continue with our conversation. Welcome back to TVC News Politics on Sunday. Well, we'll continue our conversation with my guest, Senator Mohamed Sani Musa representing Niger East Central District and he is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Finance. Well, before we went on the break, we we're talking about um, the monetary policy and all the efforts we are seeing. Desperate effort, I must say, that the CBN is making to save the Naira. How well so far? I'm sure a lot of people will be so much concerned about the central bank raising the interest rates. Uh, it has become very necessary for central bank to do that in order to try to manage the inflation that we're having. You can see the inflation has reached about 29 point something percent and then the food inflation has gone up to about 35 percent. And the only way the central bank can do and uh, cut that to start a, a slope down mm. is for it to raise the interest rates. Uh, by large, I think the policies that have been put in place to checkmate the issue of the foreign exchange market and uh, some of the stricter measures that uh, CBN have taken, I think it will translate to something very soon. But uh, again, CBN have to do more, especially in checkmating the banks, the commercial banks, when it comes to Forex. How could it be that uh, uh, commercial banks were part of those that were to trade in foreign exchange. There is no bank you will go and get that foreign exchange. So who is the bigger, so, who is, who is, who, who's the bigger problem now? The BDCs or the commercial banks, I, I don't the see, DMBs? I do not see the BDCs as a major problem. I do not see. Because BDCs can operate under a swing trading system whereby the central bank will say, look, from this moment to this moment, we are going to give you so, so, so thing. So, so, so amount. You sell, and you must not sell below this, and you must not sell above this. That swings. When the demand is there, the price definitely will a little bit jack up. When the supply is more, and meeting up the demand, the price will come low. So, it's, it's, it's an open market, yet, but we must operate in a swing system that will give both the, 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 the supply and the demand some, some room to maneuver. But when you're talking about uh, BDCs, what can BDC do? If there are strict measures that nobody should hold cash, it's uh, dollar our, 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 our legal, tender. Uh, legal tender, it is not. So let everything go online. Let everything be digital. If you want dollars, go to your account, buy it in your account, save it in your account. That's other, that is what is happening in other claims. But why must we always be able, I mean, wanting to dictate our own currency on the basis of how much dollar we have in the country? We should be dictating for dollar on the basis of how much Naira we have. And I think the central bank is coming up with these policies and I believe within a short time it will work. Mm. And when it comes to the BDCs, yes, we want, to, we want to clean up the system. We want to clean up the system. But we must also clean up the system with equity. When we are coming with clean hands, when I mean clean hands, Central Bank has to do something about the commercial banks. If they take care of that one, because it's not good to rush at taking an action which will translate to adding more burden in the sector. Mm. When we put so many people out of business, it's another serious crisis we are 
we are bringing in. Mm. So we must look at those issues. But in terms of the social safety net that the government is putting in place, I think this government has done well and need to do more, and which Mr. President have emphasized. You have had the Minister of Finance who has just mentioned that um, about 12 million families yeah. will have the, the, the subsidy, the social safety nets um, in terms of, uh, especially for those people that are vulnerable in the society. He's also taken stock of those unemployed. You can see he initiated the uh, uh, student loan, yeah, yeah. which if it comes, will also give some succor to a lot of vulnerable families. You know, the issue of price control. I mean, even if, if we practice democracy, we should also be able to have democracy under strict regulated uh, terms, especially in an issue of price control. We shouldn't allow people in the market at, uh, at their own capris to fix prices. When they hold these items, hold these items are not in the market, and now overnight they will bring those items out and fix prices. Mm. We should not allow that. Okay, uh, Senator, there's been this um, age-long um, conversation about the need to cut the cost of governance. And just recently we have seen President Bola Tinubu um, declaring his intention, his administration's intention, to implement the Stephen Orosaye report. That report had gathered dust for more than a decade. But now this administration is saying that they are ready and willing to implement it uh, in its entirety. But some people are again saying that this report is obsolete. For more than 10 years, uh, a lot of um, things have evolved. Even the civil service, there have been so much um, reforms, growth, and all of that. that it is no longer realistic. What do you say? I do not uh, want to toy the line of those that are saying the report is obsolete. I have seen the white paper, the recommendations made to the Federal Executive Council some years back. And um, reducing the cost of governance and implementing such a report, I think, is very germane in the situation we have found ourselves. We know uh, democracy, uh, democracy is a very expensive form of government, but yet there are ways that we can curtail expenditures. I have always been one of the advocates of the fact that um, Nigeria, we do not need to continue on the envelope system of uh, appropriation that we do. And I believe that uh, I'm, I, as, as chairman on finance, I mean, on, I mean chairman committee on finance in the Senate, I'm trying to make up a presentation in this area. Because I do not believe that uh, envelope budgeting will give Nigeria what we desire, especially with the renewed hope policies of this present administration. Mm -hmm. But implementing the recommendations about the Orosanya the committee poor. report, I think it's important. There are overlaps in some of the functions of uh, agencies mm -hmm. in government. Mm -hmm. I do not see why we have Ministry of Health and then we will have another uh, complete agency on its own dealing with, uh, with uh, AIDS, dealing with uh, mal uh, 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 malnutrition, malnutrition dealing with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't, can't we have them as departments under the Ministry of Health? Okay. That is what the Orosai report yeah, has set out to achieve. Yeah, exactly. Senator, before we go, I won't uh, let you go without asking the question, this question on constitution um, review, because it appears every National Assembly now embarks on um, this uh, venture. You are a member of this um, constitution review committee set up uh, to um, think uh, and amend uh, the 1999 uh, constitution now. What will be different this time around? And we have seen um, several committees come and go without um, its report being implemented. You see, constitutional review processes are very crucial in a democratic government, in a democratic setup, because it gives the country's uh, governing framework. It guides on how you, 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 even those that you elected and those that you are going to represent to be able to know that you are working under the dictates of their desires. That's all about constitution. And uh, when you advocate for a situation where you, you feel your own people are not getting what they're supposed to get, 
and uh, there are some constitutional uh, 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 sections that do not allow you to have those things. It is only fair you bring them up to your representatives to say, look, we need this area, this area, this area to be, to be, to be, to be amended or to be expunged from the constitution, mm -hmm. and we need so, so, so thing to come into the constitution. Yeah. So I think um, the, the whole thing about the review of the constitution is to be able to give room for enough of checks and balances. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not going to be a business as usual. We have tried, we have, uh, I mean, some of these, I mean, these committees have been, both been inaugurated mm -hmm. at the Senate and, and the, the House, House of Representatives. Yeah. And we have given our time, um, ourselves a time frame within which to be able to, to, to pass some of these uh, reviews and then send them to the state assemblies for the state assemblies to be able to do yeah. this. Okay. But this time around, we are calling on the subnational. I mean, especially the governors, to consider Nigeria first. The maximum a governor can be in office is eight years. Yeah. The maximum a governor can be in office is eight years by our constitution. And after eight years, the same governors come back to the National Assembly agitating for reviews of this constitution, especially in the areas of policing, okay. in uh, the areas of uh, giving autonomy mm. to the local government. All right. Senator, we must go now. You said in the area of state police, just in um, three seconds, where do you stand on the issue of state police? Are you in support or you're against? There are cons and pros when you talk of policing. Okay, we, we, but, we, but the issue is that if we can do that by amending the constitution and allowing the states to be able to enact also the laws, because there will be overlaps and okay. there will be crises. All right, we must we must go now, distinguished editor. I apologize. I wish we'll next time continue when you are this conversation me here, next time. Give me a longer time. Sure, we'll continue this conversation next time. Well, that's all on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. You can see this episode again on TBC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. I am Femi Akonde. See you next time.